Welcome everybody, it's Tom, and in this video we are going to be looking at a new intro cutscene for Revelations, and it is absolutely amazing, and we're going to be doing a sort of breakdown of everything, just pretty much, just going to be explaining everything that's happening that I can, and also things that, point out things that you guys may have missed. But if you guys have not watched this thing, like a clean cut through without any interruptions, I recommend you go do that first, which I'll have a first, in the first link below in the description, you can go click on that and watch it all the way through, then come right back. But without further delay, let's get right into this. So I'll actually play you guys a clip of it, and then we'll come right back. Okay. Uh, let's recap a bit, shall we? This was meant to be a new start, really. A perfect world. Free from all the evil that had corrupted each and every corner of the known and unknown universe. It was going to be a place of safety for the kids. The little yous. You, little... Well, so far, so good. But things started to go wrong soon after you arrived. Now, I can understand your initial shock coming face to face with Maxis, especially after so long. But you did the right thing. You followed the plan. You brought the summoning key here. And you destroyed that bloody machine once and for all. So at the start, we get an actual quote from Monty, but before we actually talk about that, we want to actually look at how it looks. Just look at it. Look how green this is. This is very strange to zombies. If you think about it, all our maps are quite dark, and there's not really anything green, and when they are green, it's like pretty dark. Like, Zetsubo and Shima is pretty dark, even though it was green, but this is like blue skies, clouds, green, this nice green, these houses just look so nice, and I just look at this, and I'm like, wow, to actually see that in zombies, that's actually pretty cool. But then Monty's actually at the same time talking about all this, and we actually enter into the house, see a couple of things. He's actually saying that the house, this world, is supposed to be meant to have a safe place from for the children and everything, and it was going to keep from the corruption of the known universe and the unknown universe and all that good stuff. So it sounds pretty nice. And then right as we actually enter into the house area, well, we already entered into the house, we actually go into one of the rooms, we see all the children, but before we actually talk about them, if you guys actually look at the guy's hand who's opening the door, that's Monty's hand. So I just want to point that out. I'm not too sure if it has any like relevance or anything. Like that. But anyways, to actually talk about some things that are actually in this room. So as you guys can see, we can see now five children, unlike the Origins cutscene like we where we only saw two, just Samantha and Eddie, which is kind of weird. They're kind of wearing the same exact clothes, but whatever, whatever. Anyways, we see Samantha again. She looks like she's holding a mob of the dead zombie. That's what it looks like to me. We see Eddie and it looks like he's holding a buried zombie, that's what I think it looks like. And right after we see what I believe to be Takeo, it's just Takeo looks really weird. Uh, it doesn't look Japanese anymore because we know people like they change when they're actually become this children version because we know that Eddie and Samantha were both German, but now they both aren't German and they have an American accent. I'm not too sure what happened with Takeo. After that, I believe it to be Nikolai. And the reason I think this is Nikolai is because of the next kid. I think he's Dempsey because if you look at this guy's hand, it looks like he's, hold he's holding the Dempsey action figure unless it's not so I would imagine that's Dempsey and the other one back there with the tank is actually Nikolai so let's actually talk about the things inside this room so we see like one of these pick these trucks uh these work trucks I don't know exactly what they're called which wasn't there before inside the origins cutscene and then we see this another stuffed dog or something I'm not too sure what that is I'm pretty sure that wasn't there in the last one either but then we, again we get the mannequin and we can't see that we can see the bottom of these posters and I'm not too sure if they're the same ones they probably are hopefully that'd be cool if they are if, if they're even new ones that'd be even more interesting but anyways we see again the gramophone and the bear and of course those were there in the origins one and of course we see this little perk bottle i think it is i'm not too sure it looks like jokinog to me if i could be mistaken but then we see a, the dog fluffy on sitting in the background you guys see him get up with the alarm when it goes off but one last thing i want to point out is if you actually look between takeo and eddie you can actually see this drawing on the floor now people are saying oh, maybe this is a drawing of Revelations, maybe it's a drawing of a previous map. Another idea is that maybe it's Shironuma, but that's about it for this room. 
So right after this, we actually see some guy standing here, and all of a sudden these people teleport in, and it turns out to be our Origins crew, and then we see Rick Toffin, and then we see this new guy, and it's Maxis. And at the same time, Monty's actually saying something pretty interesting. He's actually saying, uh, talking about how everything was well until we showed up. So when I was first watching this, I'm like, well, what did Rick Toffin do? But then we'll find out in, in a little bit exactly what he actually did. But he says that we did everything we were supposed to. And of course, one thing that I was very confused about is that why was Rick Toffin, because he says, I know how you can be confused after seeing Maxis after so long, but why would he be confused? I'm really confused at that, that why he would be confused. I really don't know why he would. Just doesn't make any sense to me. But after that, he does say that we did everything we were supposed to. We bring the summoning key and we destroyed that bloody machine once and for all. In his words, obviously, I don't say bloody. But anyways, it's just pretty interesting and it's just that. But anyways, I'll let you guys watch the next clip and of course, we'll come back right after that. Thing is, Max has went and bulged everything up. Please. He heard voices, you see, calling to him. Only together can we prevent the destruction of your world. It wasn't really his fault. You know, he hasn't actually got his soul yet. All I got was a brain. Anyway, the key thing, as in the thing that is key, is that Max is fiddled around with the summoning synergy and accidentally released an even bigger bastard. Someone even I didn't know was in there. The Shadow Man. The one and only original Harbinger of Doom. But next we actually hear what exactly happens inside this. So if you guys listen to what he's saying, we see Maxis, well, we hear Monty actually talking about how Maxis balls everything up in his words. Of course, I don't know who uses a, that word balls, but anyways, we hear that he actually went out and was hearing voices and we hear no voice other than the shadow man. Holy crap, the shadow man actually returned. I was like, wait, wait, what? Oh, okay. Um. Anyways, that that's just so cool. But apparently, he went down to the basement area. So were they actually teleported in? I assume to be in the house. Also, I forgot to say that a while ago. But it's probably the same area. So I'm not too sure what the origins characters are doing in the house because I thought their souls were supposed to go to the house, not the origins characters. I'm just so confused right now why this is all happening. It's just very confusing me but anyways max is heading down to the basement which he looks just like the guy from campaign if i didn't mention that already and so when he's walking there i want to stop right now and he actually bump up the brightness to this clip right here or this frame right here and as you guys can see in the background you can actually see the portrait from the rise of the rocket which i find very interesting that the wolf king's po portrait is right here i'm not too sure why it is exactly any ideas for that down in the comments but right after this we see something super super interesting we actually see that when Maxis picks up the summoning key, he actually becomes the Shadow Man. It's like, wait, what? So the reasoning I believe that they have behind this, because at the same time he says it wasn't really his fault. All he had was a brain. So Maxis doesn't have a soul right now. So he's just a body without a soul. He's just that. And the reason why the Shadow Man can take over him and not anybody else is because because what is inside the summoning key? Of course, the Shadow Man and his soul. Well, no, just his soul. So it would make sense that he would be able to take over Maxis, I guess. If that makes sense. Whatever, they can do whatever they want. And the weird thing is, he actually gets the look of the Shadow Man, which I find very weird. I don't know why and your soul entry into somebody would actually make the, your appearance change, but whatever. But right after this, we see the Shadow Man actually is in the house and he leaves the house. While the Shadow Man is exiting the house, we actually hear Monty actually saying that he didn't even know he was in the summoning key. What? Why? I thought Monty was omnipotent. What? What is up with this? Is he a liar or something, Monty? I really don't know why he doesn't know all this stuff. And what's interesting that Monty actually has a name for the Shadow Man. And he calls him the one and only original Harbinger of Doom. So what is that? What? I don't really get what that is. So why does Monty? Why is Monty aware of the Shadow Man? How powerful is the Shadow Man? Because we assume that he was just some other apothecary and that's it. There's nothing more to her, him. But at this point. It makes me question this, because what if if he's as powerful as Monty? That'd be super interesting, because as you guys can see, he actually splits open a thing in reality right there, and 
you have to have some real power to do that and everything just starts collapsing of course we'll see inside the next frame but i'm just so confused on what the shadow man actually is i'm questioning if he's even a pothkin anymore i think maybe he's just this thing to do with the apothecary i'm just really lost but anyways let's actually watch the next clip and of course we'll come right back so i'm going to be absolutely truthful with you things have got way too far out of control this isn't any vague woo-hoo evil. We're talking about the Apothecons, the most powerful and evil entities in all the existences that ever existed. And now they're here, in our perfect world. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. It's a fucking shit show. So right away we see just a bunch of stuff getting destroyed and one of them is actually the church from Thraizidraki which I find really weird why the church in Thraizidraki is right here. It's just super strange. I'm not too sure what exactly that's all about and it's actually covered in a bunch of grass and green well not grass but these vines or something and of course different from before it was in a snowy area in the Alps and then after this we actually get this view of course we see the giant or the earth like Getting, getting shifted like the how people imagine earthquakes but they're not really like that but anyways we see this view of this outer space area with a whole bunch of these islands and, or things i have no idea what's happening here i'm just so lost and then we see this thing just appear out of nowhere all these rock things just appear out of nowhere and people are saying maybe this is shiro numa which is very interesting because i'll have this image that i found on reddit and of course credit to the reddit user down below you can go check out his post if you guys want to do that go ahead it'll be in the description but as you guys can see, he's making a comparison between this and Shangular, which I totally agree. This could possibly Shangular. Like, we saw this inside my sneak peek trailer breakdown I had yesterday, if you guys want to check that out. Of course, that'll be down in the description too, but as you guys can see, this looks like Shangular. Of course, it could not be, but at the same time, I think it is. I just, I'm just going to say what I think it is, but I don't know, have your own opinions down in the comments. And I'm so confused why there's this nebula stuff behind them and these stars. Are they somewhere outer space? I, I'm just so confused. And right after this we actually get this super cool view of the shadow man holy crap just look at him acting looking like an absolute boss the giant blue star thing which we'll find out what it is in a little bit and he's just standing from oh my gosh that's just so cool of course he's in his apothecary form or if it's really an apothecary form or whatever we see him looking back and then we hear monty talking again and we see our origins characters inside the house so for some reason you have to think about this the origin characters were inside the house this whole time they were here inside when all this stuff was happening i have a question what were they doing and why were they that i i just don't know what i i don't know why our origins characters are in the house it's just so confusing to me and then right after this we hear monty actually just talking about how bad the apothecary are how evil they are don't underestimate them it's just that's they're one of the worst well not one of the worst the worst pretty much that's what he's saying and now that they're inside their perfect world this was supposed to be their world and they accidentally bring him into the, their perfect world after this we can actually see what that giant blue thing is and it's so interesting as you guys can see there's these giant things i have no idea what they are these, these giant monsters pretty much and they're just sucking stuff out of it i'm like what the heck are they doing and then all of a sudden we see one go by and it has none other than 115 in its mouth and what does it do with it it shoots it into this portal so is this the corruption they're bringing to all the other realms they're bringing the 115 what is element 115 i, I thought it was an element for so long but what oh my gosh what that's just so cool like this that it was their fault for this this the pothkins were the ones spreading this 115 i i just thought it was there or something like that that make oh my gosh that is just so cool but oh wow that's just cool but anyways we see an, a view of notched uh, they're on tote and, and it's really cool but before we actually get into a full view of it i want to look back and as you guys can see in the background we can see a death ray in the background it's between this crack so that's another interesting thing to point out of course the death ray is 
these are from the rise of the rocket and what you see on a lot of things relating to the rise of the rocket but then we actually get a really good view of notch turn tote and we see the rubble of the stairs and all that good stuff so i'm pretty sure this is the like, accessible area because we do see zombies walking through it and right here at the end we just here see our four characters coming out of the house like absolute bosses and monty it actually closes the door behind them so i'm a little confused why monty stay in the house so my idea is that Monty's actually staying there to protect the children if they're still okay. Hopefully they're still okay. I'm just so confused. So is Monty just going to chill back and protect the children and then just gonna give us some a little advice while we play? I don't know. But anyways, that's at the end. He just pretty much just says that it's a cuss word hole. Uh, yeah. Anyways, after that, we do see salvation and everything. We find out it's not a zombies only DLC, which was disappointing. I, I cried when I saw that. But anyways, one last thing I want to mention before I actually let you guys go. I want to actually show you the thumbnail they use for this and i'll have it on screen now and as you guys can see look at that thing the things that were tra transporting the 115 between the giant thing of 115 the giant star of 115 and the other worlds is absolutely humongous i didn't think it was that big i really did not think it was that big whoa those things are huge and also you obviously can see pack a punch right there so pack a punch is going to be here so i imagine this to be somewhere deep inside the map one thing i find very strange is that pack punch is on a truck and it looks Looks very unaccessible right now so I'm not too sure what that's all about but we see our gobble gum machine some rubble right there the church obviously and we got our ICR1 or HVK I can't really tell which one it is right now on the wall that was our wall gun and behind there we got the giant giant drill or beacon thing that people are calling it but one other thing I believe I can point out is that if you look on the top left where it's all red another thing to point out obviously is just that it's really blue on one side and really red on one side I'm not too sure what that's about maybe they'll play some bigger role but as you guys can see on the red side if you look at that giant island up there you can actually see the mystery box light coming from up there it's another thing to to point out so that is really cool it's just oh my gosh it's just so cool but anyways that's about it for this video if you guys did enjoy this video go ahead and thumbs up and also if you found something new or found out something you didn't know that'd be another reason to thumbs up but if you guys want to stay tuned for more revelations and salvations i just love saying that i'm not actually going to cover the whole dlc i'm just covering revelations but anyways if you want to stay tuned for any of that go ahead and subscribe but i'm gonna go and i will catch you guys on my next video